carry the last one in the plant kingdom that is called the angiosperms angio in greek word angion cover sperm may means seed the plant are the seed which ever it is covered with a capsule are a covering so if the seed is covered with the structure called angiosperms so maybe you have seen so variety of the plants some are with a bright colored flowers attracting everyone and some are with a small little flower with a um, fragments or maybe some are very delicate plant with a flower seed etc a variety of plants you can observe so variety of flowers you can observe so all the plants comes under all flowering plants so all flowering plants comes under angiosperms we have completed already the gymnosperms what are what are the gymnosperms gymnosperms are the plants are the which the seed is not covered with a capsule but here the seed is covered with a capsule here are drawn the two uh, just a uh, diagram that is one is called a monopod plant another it is called a dipod plant dipod plant So let us study now angiosperm. As I said, we will record angiosperm cover. Sperm may be seed. The seed which is covered with the capsule or covering. For example, imagine coconut seed covered with the husk. The inside the seed there is an edible part, white color one. So that covering it is called. It comes under plant angiosperm. And all flowering plants are called are comes under. So we have to think in our textbook given monopod and dipod. So let us study now what is monopod and what what is dipod. For example, so I take a maize plant, corn. Simply we can say so it is a monopod plant, dipod plant. So we have learned now what is a major what is the major difference between monopod and dipod. Mono means single. Cot or tilden. Now, so I take an example of maize plant. That is an example for mono cot. So major difference we have to understand. So which are the major? So if I sow a plant, for example, if I sow a seed under the earth surface. So if you, you can conduct a small experiment in your kitchen itself. Take a green gram. And few seeds, whichever you want. So soak in water, and the very next day, so sow in the soil, or maybe uh, sow the seed in a small container or a pot, etc., with the soil. So few days, what you can observe? For example, if you sow a seed of green gram in a kitchen, so this green gram, when it will. A uh, soap after a few hours. Then, if you keep separately, so if you separate the water and if you keep separately the uh, seed, so automatically, so the seed, the opening of the structure, this structure we call cotyledon. Cotyledon is the one where, for example, think a uh, gram, any gram, green gram or maybe uh, other. So, if you take the seed leaf. For example, so the seed. Imagine this is a seed. So if you soak the seed in water, after that there will be a sprout, sprouted seed. What we will say? So this sprouted seed is so carefully. So there will be growth of a structure above and below. And in between, so in between. The leaf. So on the upper surface it will grow into a leaf, and the lower surface it will form into a root. So beside this there is a structure called cotyledon, edible. What we are eating. So this structure are called cotyledon is mean for storage of food. So cotyledon, a single cotyledon is present. If you see the uh, paddy, uh, right? So specially paddy. So when you sow the seed in the field or maybe in a pot, what you can also you can also only a single leaflet. For example, coconut seed. So if you sow the seed, so 
one, there will be only one forty eight m. So there will not be a separation of the seed at the seed port. So only single plant will grow. So that is also below the ground. For example, think of a coconut seed. If you sow in the seed, so it will grow below the ground. The seed will not come out of the ground. That is a speciality of monopod plant. A single cotyledon is present. So that's why it is called single cotyledon. Then. So if you observe the leaf, what are the structure? So what you can observe? There will be an vination. Vination means design on the plant. So majority we are drawing a broad leaf in all the plants. There is a variation difference between the two groups of the plant. One group of the plant where we can see the parallel lines. So these parallel lines is called the vination structure of the leaf. So here it is. Parallel vination. I've taken maize plant. If you observe, so there is a parallel vination. This is called vination. Parallel vination in the plant. Single cotyledon, a single seed. Next one, vascular bundle. Since the plant possesses xylem and phloem as a conducting tissue, so this vascular bundle, xylem and phloem, is cat. While comparing to dicot plant, now I compare both the two plants. First, single cotyledon, single seed. If you sow the seed also, it will not divide. But when you come to dicot, so here it is. Two cotyledon it is present. So that's why the name it is called dicotyledon. Cotyledon. So dicotyledon means. For example, if you sow the seed of a uh, gram, so I have taken the gram seed. So this gram seed, whether it is an example for monocot or dicot, it is an example for dicot. It is done. Take a green gram, soak in water. So after few hours, you have to keep separately, drain the water and keep separately. Then you can see there is a structure to. Structures with the leaf, a broad leaf, and below the portion there is a formation of root after few days. So that's why they are called dicotyledon, and also the plants will comes under dicot. Monocot means a single cotyledon is present, where double cotyledon is present. That's why it is called dicotyledon, and comes under dicot. If you observe the leaf. There is a parallel vination structure veins here. A broad leaf. Observe carefully. This is a broad leaf. Again veins. Again the primary, secondary veins will be present. Broad leaf with veins. Margin. A thick margin will be there. Midrib, etc. So that is for. That's why it is called reticulate vination. A large broad. Vein like structure called reticulate vegetation. Vascular bundle, xylem and phloem is scattered. Scattered here it is in a ring. Xylem and phloem both are in a systematic ring like structure present with canopy. So if I explain, xylem and phloem is scattered. Take a stem. Absorb with the cross section of the stem. We are conducting our practical classes in the regular our classes. So take a stem, take the cross section, absorb under microscope. You can see scatter. Vascular bundle is scatter. Here xylem and phloem is systematically arranged. So that's why it is in the form of a ring. Third one, a root. If you pluck a plant easily from the ground. For example, so that plant it is nothing but fibrous root. Root is for fibers. What do you mean by fibers? So, for example, if there is no or growth of a deep root to the soil surface, for example, all the root surface will from the a single stem. For example, you can give the grass. Or maybe coconut plant, or maybe maize plant. Observe always. So if you pluck a plant, especially 
with grass plant you can see the tufts of the root that is called fibrous root like a spread egg structure like a brush like structure it is called fibrous root while comes to if you come to a uh, tap root tap root is maybe the one tree root will be there it will grow deep to the earth surface to absorb water mineral etc and the primary root and the secondary root again tertiary root so there are different types of roots we present in the type of so that's why they are called tap root one deep root will be there primary root secondary root tertiary root etc so all these is present in the dicot plant the reason uh, we can say it is tap root now i'll compare both two single cotyledon so if you take a corn or maybe a paddy or maybe a coconut so all these will grow with a single cotyledon hence they are called monocot uh, most of the plants are comes under monocot and then so most of the plants also comes under dicot so maximum here it is in a number of the plants dicot so where the plant for example if you take a mustard plant this is a diagram of a mustard plant so this mustard plant is an example for dicot so how it is dicot so you have to observe any plant if you pluck observe a grass plant and a hibiscus plant and a rose plant compare both you can learn the entire topic within 5 minutes first what you have to observe so a single cotyledon after if you are sowing only we can observe and then slowly we can observe with a keen observation broad leaf primary veil and the veil like structure a broad leaf is called reticulate so hence i can say this plant is dicot if i observe a monocot plant the parallel ligation only single line parallel structure so that's why it is called parallel ligation so next what we can observe we cannot observe uh, vascular bladder it requires microscope the second one so the second one is called the root here so fibrous if you easily can pluck the plant then it is a fibrous so i cannot pluck the plant that is root tree so that is a dicot so if it is attached to the soil surface in the deep so that is because it consists of a primary secondary tertiary root so hence there possess a stack root system so if the root will develop till the bottom or maybe till the deep towards earth it will suck the nutrient and it will form it will grow with the form or it will stand firmly so if you apply a uh, if we are studying so if you are studying properly with the keen interest it is like a dicot plant so no one can uh, shake the plant for example so if if you are learning all with an observation everything so it will like a it will stand the form so same thing here the dicot plant with the tap root that is a primary secondary tertiary root is present here only tufts of root that's why it is called fibrous root so all these are the major examples of the root called angiosperms angiosperm angiosperm means cover sperm means seed if you want to see still take a coconut seed with the covering husk of the coconut absorb open the husk and absorb the structure that is what the seed is covered with the uh, capsule so that's why it is called angiosperm so monocot single cotyledon dicot two cotyledon and then parallel ligation reticulate ligation of the plant and then vascular bundle scattered vascular bundle it is in a systematic structure so for example can in exam in exam there is a question so if i pluck a plant easily so then it is which group of the plant fibrous so if you pluck all the tendril plants it will come as it is but if you grow after that if you pluck so all grass for example if you take the grass each structure node and interroot there will be a root structure but it is in dicot only one 
root it is present that is called tap root. Here it is many tufts of the root that is called fibrous root. So these are pumps under angiosperms. Angiosperms means so it is in flowering plants. If the tufts of the flower are clusters of the flower together it is called inflorescence. Clusters of the flower is called inflorescence. So, so we have completed already all the plant kingdom. Next we are studying uh, kingdom animalia. So we have completed already all the plant kingdom and primary organisms. Let us study kingdom animalia. Animalia, the word itself indicates animals. So we are now almost we are studying a different uh, group of animals from Porifera till higher advanced organism till mammals we are going to study. So today we are study, we are going to study the two groups of an animalia in kingdom animalia kingdom phylum Porifera and phylum Cilentrata. Cilentrata. There are the two organisms animals we are going to study. Before studying Porifera and Cilentrata, animalia animals. In this group we have to understand a few points. So how we are dividing the groups how we are studying step by step. One, the main one they lack the cell wall. So cell wall is absent. The second one eukaryotic. A nucleus is present, a definite nucleus and then so they are heterotrophic. They depend upon other for the uh, nutrition. So that is called the heterotrophic. And one more. So according to that we are studying uh, triploblastic, bilateral, radial symmetry. Maybe you heard about the word now itself or maybe before in any textbook etc. What do you mean by radial symmetry? For example, if we take a circle, this is just an example I am giving. If I divide a circle equally in different parts, if the line segment divides a circle in many parts, same thing if an organism will be cut in a different plane, you will get equal half. So this is called radial symmetry. Radial means each part is similar. If you divide an organism into different parts, so if you divide an organism, if you cut an organism in different plane, but also if you get an equal portion, then it is called radial. This is called radial. So if I cut an organism, for example, think, this is just an example I have given. So if I divide, I can divide only in one plane, equal to half. More than that, I cannot divide an organism. This is called bilateral. This is called bilateral. So you have to keep in your mind while studying. Radial means any plane I can divide an organism into equal plane, equal half. But here I can divide an organism horizontally or vertically only one plane. Then it is called bilateral. So this is one point you have to keep in mind. The next one. According to the body structure, there is called a, a two layer, three layer etc. So triploblastic animals, three layer. So and uh, bilateral width. So the two layers, triploblastic, diblastic here. So all that it is according to the layer inside organization. So here to study an organism, it is an animal group. So we can think. In our mind it will come where there are the organ systems are present, here it is totally different. A different organization systems are present, so cell differentiation is there in the group. Okay. So next we are going to study the two now today. That is the one, Porifera phylum, Porifera phylum, Cilentarita. So I compare the two, so we can study in a systematic order. Porifera so if you observe or maybe we can see all these organisms in marine water, most of the marine water, sea water, salt water, marine are marine water. So pronunciation. So in this we can observe maximum number of porifera and cilentrata and few also we can observe in fresh water. 
So maximum or most of the organism is marine, a few are fresh water. So how we can differentiate? For example, so when you visit uh, near the seashore, maybe you will get some of the organisms like this. So what are they? So let us study. Porifera, Island Porifera, Porifera, Pores, Pores. On the body surface, if you observe an organism, on the body surface there is a holes or there are holes or the pores. So small hole like structure is present. So that's why they are properly called porifera. So next one, organization with the pores. So that's why we are grouping the organism under porifera. Next one, the rays and canal system. For example, if you also the organism like cyclone. So this cyclone, it is in a different color. So all organisms are in a different color here. The light in a shapes etc. We can see the colorful organisms also in this group. So one is cyclone, eupleptilia, spongilla, still many more examples are there in the orifera. Canal system, for example, so if it will be whether it is moving from one place to another. Animals means in our mind it will come, it will move from one place to another. So here it is totally different, one organism, cyclone, it is unknown, it is not at all moving, it is attached to an subtratum, attached to the rock surface etc. So sessile means they are attached to one place. Solitary, single or maybe colonies. They live in solitary or maybe colonies. Single also, alone also they live or maybe in group. That's why it is called colonies. So canal system means, so when it absorbs the water, this is a diffusion process. The holes are present, so when it will absorb the water. So that's why commonly called sponges. If you dip the sponges, for example, here it is one sponge. So if you dip the sponge in water, so you can see the high amount of water will be absorbed with this sponge. If I squeeze the water, will flow. Same thing in our organism, it will absorb the water in high amount and it will send to a structure called there is a canal system where there is a hard skeleton is present and also a structure like a size. So we will study now. These structure a skeleton outer covering they are mainly made up of the reason silicon structure called spicules a needle like structure different in shape some are like star some are like spherical some are like oval etc. So different types of uh, structures spicules made up of calcium carbonate a skeleton made up of calcium carbonate, very hard in structure, it's like a needle. So here these spicules are present, in between there is a system called canal system. This water will move outside to a mouth like structure called asculum. Asculum, a broad mouth is present, so through that, so the water will flow outside. Next, the digestion also, from the is structure called Kyanocytes in between. So these will absorb the food and then it will be digested. So there is no special digestive system like in our body. There is a system called kyanocytes. So using this, they digest the food. So that's why the nutrition comes and nutrition takes place with the help of kyanocytes from this side. So all the water and absorption of water from the mouth portion a large mouth that is called osculum and the folds are called ostia o s t i a ostia osculum means a mouth it is attached to an subtratum sessile and maybe non motile so next one eupleptilia venous flower basket so it is it looks beautifully so if you observe an organism in marine water, so different colors and some are very beautiful with a skeleton that is 
called calcium carbonate deposition. That is the next one example is called spongula. So commonly called porifera, commonly called the sponges. Main example is siphon, spongula, eupleptilia. So these are related about porifera. Porifera, pori means the pores or stia. Pores are present to absorb the water. So different colors are present, different animals are will be there in this group phylum porifera. While comparing to ceiling data, here pores are present, whether here pores are present, there are two layer. Bilayer is present and then so if you divide organism, it is in bilaterally symmetrical. Bilaterally symmetrical or radial symmetrical. So some organism if you divide most of that it is a radial symmetrical. Radial means each equal part you will get if you divide uh, vertically. Next, there is a structure called tentacle. Tentacle where it will act as a, like a defense system. So this will absorb the food also through the mouth. The tentacles are present and so these tentacles will helpful like a defensive system. So if it is a nutrition, so here it is because of the tannocytes, here gastrovascular cavity GBC, gastrovascular cavity in between, here it is a canal system, here there is a gastrovascular cavity is present, the food will be in the, the digested through the gastrovascular cavity. So commonly called corals, maximum in these groups are called the corals. The reason is, so they are deposited with calcium carbonate. So the internal structure is deposited with the calcium carbonate structure. So that's why they are called the corals. Mainly it is used for an ornamental purposes. It is also comes under the group of animals. Lenterata. Since it is consist of gastrovascular cavity, so they are called cilentrate, cilentrums. So and then the structure, string-like structure, like the string-like structure is present to handle the food. So that's why they are called the needoblasts. Needoblasts are the string-like structure present in cilentrata. Uh, so these are the few extra points from your textbook. So while studying. So the first one, porifera, bearing folds or holes or ostia, so water, main example is siphon. Second, here it is a organism such as canal system is present, here gastro, vascular cavity is present, tentacles to defend the uh, organism and we take the food easily. Here diffusion process will be taken place, here with the help of needoblast. So they inject organisms and it is very dangerous also. These tentacles are very dangerous. Next. So these are solitary, colonial, mainly they are called the corals because of deposition of calcium carbonate. Main two examples, hydra and sea anemone. And jellyfish comes under in sea lentrata. Sea lentrata, so these are consist of an gastrovascular cavity. So G, B, C. So that's why they are called cementer and then they come under cementrata. Commonly corals. These are commonly called sponges. Next we are going to study the two groups that is called the after porifera and the cementrata. Next two groups. Still it is higher to the uh, groups platyhelminthes and ascomethes. That is nothing but flat worm and round worm.